Today is World Arts Day, and we're going to talk about reimagining Ghana's future artistically. I have two men here with me to do a discussion throughout our conversation. Please use the hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line 0550 for us to hear from you. If you're outside Ghana, you can use the country code plus 233. I have with me Nana Otua Hene Echampong. He's the president of Ghana Association of Visual Artists, as well as Prince Hilton, who is the CEO of VASEP. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good. Thank you. So I'll start with you, Nana. Can you please tell us a bit about art in general and the importance of art for our national development? Right. Thank you very much, and good morning to all your cherished viewers. Um, art is life, so to speak. And Ghana, um, Ghana Association of Visual Artists came together for the, last, um, for the past 30 years trying to work things out to reinvigorate art into the system, students and everybody. So we've been working, practicing artists, promoting art and all that. Various disciplines in the visual arts domain, talking about painting, sculpture, ceramics, metal works, textiles, basketry, and so on and so forth. Wide range that come together to form the visual arts domain. So this is what has been happening. Under, in the world, we have the world's umbrella body, that is International Association of Art, mm. IAA. Ghana happens to be a member in 2015, nice. when they had their 17th General Assembly and Congress in Pilsen, mm -hmm. Czech Republic. Um, so that was the first time Ghana had the opportunity to register and depart. And I was privileged to represent Ghana in Pilsen, Czech that Republic. Like? It was amazing mm -hmm. for the first time meeting the entire world uh, of visual artists. And the good news is that when we went in there, we presented our various country cases and what we've been doing over the years. And at the end of the day, there was an election to elect 11 member world executives mm. for this world, uh, umbrella body. And um, thankfully, I was elected okay. into, so it means that Ghana has a seat wow. in this 11-member world executive body and also made the coordinator for the entire of Africa region. We have coordinated for various regions, Europe, Africa, Asia, and so, and so forth. So Ghana doubled up as the coordinator for Africa. So from there, that was 2015. 2016, Ghana celebrated uh, it's first World Art Day in Ghana. Nice. So apparently this is what the... What was the theme then? Yes. Um, it has escaped me no until it comes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this year is the sixth edition okay. in Ghana and ninth in the world. Oh, wow. 2011, artists across the world with the fascination of the um, UNESCO came together and then we declared this World Art Day in Mexico in 2011. Mm -hmm. So the first world celebration was in 2012. Mm -hmm. So this year is the ninth for the world and the sixth for mm -hmm. Ghana. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Now Prince, you are yeah. in the ecosystem. Mm. Share a bit of your experience with us. Oh, on, on art? Yes. Uh, I've, I've, been, uh, I've been practicing art all my life, mm -hmm. <laughs> I could say. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, for me personally, it's, it's been um, it's been a joy, it's been a great experience, um, even being an artist and um, practicing what God has blessed me with. I, it's been my prayer and um, my mission to also transfer uh, my gifts, my talent to the youth. And that's what I've been doing uh, for the past 15 years, grooming young visual artists across mm -hmm. Ghana, across mm -hmm. Africa too as well. I've been to so many African countries. Uh, with VASEP, Visual Art Students Empowerment Project. Mm -hmm. And also the mission is to exposing the youth or the young artists to the diverse job opportunities in the art. Mm -hmm. So um, it wouldn't be like if you're an artist, you only draw and paint. There are so many areas that the artist can dive into, and that's what I've been championing for the past 15 years. So there are parents watching us who may not understand the yeah. opportunities within that space. Can you walk us through great. some of Great. Them? So aside drawing and painting, we have set design, which okay. is like um, the studio, the setup, which I do most of the set designs for wow. TV. I do set design for stage play. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, Uncle Ebo White have done most of his stage plays. Um, Latif Abubakar have done most. I'm also uh, a filmmaker. I, mm -hmm. I studied at NAFTI. Okay. I studied art direction and production design. Wow. So most of this international film that come to Ghana, mm -hmm. I work on as a production designer and um, a set design. I do special effect makeup. You watch movies, they stab someone, they shoot someone. It's all under art, visual art. I, I, I found myself working with Hollywood in Nairobi mm -hmm. in the film Sense8 nice. as a scenic artist. And in that film, I transformed a donkey to look zebra. Wow. Yes, and it was stuck off the town. And a I donkey to look like a zebra. Yeah, so an artist... That is, sounds like a lot of... <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> so you watch the movie, you see, donk you see zebras. But they are not zebras. They are not zebras, they are, they are donkeys that I transformed. And I was hired by Jean-Claude Van Damme to, do, to work on that, on that set. Wow. And, you know, uh, to say... Artists are never limited. You should never limit yourself to just drawing and painting. You could do so many things, you know. So, so, so that's what I've been doing for we'll, the past We'll years. come back to the opportunities. <laughs> and viewers, as we are talking to them, if you have any questions or contributions, I can already see uh, Parker making notes for, for, for some of his future <laughs> aspirations. <laughs> the hashtag to use is Breakfast Daily. And our WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. Banana, the theme this year is reimagining Ghana's future artistically. Tell us a bit about that. After 64 years of independence, this is Ghana. What are we looking forward to in terms of our economy, health, delivery, education, and so on and so forth? So it is in, in the dream of the artist to visually create something to say that this is what we want to see our Ghana in future, in the next five, ten years, and all that. So today, this morning from 9 to 12, on the streets of Accra High Street, mm -hmm. front of the Kwame Nkrumah Museum, and then Old Parliament House across to the Bank of Ghana area, we have assembled ourselves, artists from the Ghana Association of Visual Artists, that's the umbrella body of visual artist groups. We're working with Vasap, yeah. his group, working with Ghana Graffiti. Okay. Yeah. And others, Outleaf Foundation, we're working with all of them. So we'll be on the high street this morning, and all the artists through painting, installation, sculpture, will showcase and indicate how they would want to see Ghana artistically in the nearest future. Mm. So when we have done this between the hours of 9 and 12, then we will bring all the works into the forecourt of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly and to showcase them, to mount an exhibition from 2 p.m. to 6, where we will display and uh, we'll have the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, the National Commission on Culture, and our host, the mayor of Accra, to open the exhibition for us to have some interaction and some discourse. The philosophies, the ideologies behind individual works, what they mean by what they have done by imagining, reimagining, Ghana's future artistically. So it's going to be some kind of discourse with what we want to envision in the nearest future. That, this sounds like a packed, packed day. And yes. we'll, we'll, we'll get all the details again for exactly. our viewers to join you all the way from the streets right. to AMA. And hopefully there'll be some pieces sure. for sale that people can sure. buy. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but Prince, Hi. talk to us a bit about art as a tool for social change, because you already right. mentioned Vasep. There's yeah. also um, yeah. Surge yeah. doing what he's doing mm -hmm. with the yeah. gallons that's to right. raise awareness that's to what's happening right. in La. There's that's more right. literally beautifying the Nima. City. So there's this new crop of artists yeah. who find it as, as, as a duty to bring about social change through yeah. their work. It's like you've said it all. Oh, no, it's <laughs> a question. <laughs> yeah, so um, great. Art in itself um, is life, as we all say. And um, I could say if you don't understand or if you don't get to understand art, then you're not living life. Because um, art clothed you, mm -hmm. art gave you a car to drive in, you know. Um, art is totally everything. And I believe it's about time that we Africans, I. Yeah, I say Africa because we are the ones that are not so appreciating art. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, development, uh, we have, look at our cities. With the fields, I know that those 
filth could be transformed, recycled to create an art piece or to, to, to create a, a, a museum where people can even pay and go see all those things. Uh, there are a lot of people who are also coming up with great, like great ideas, um, like what we did recent last year at the um, Aqua J Interchange, yes, beautiful. where Gava and other um, art associations came together to do that masterpiece. You see, after we did that, um, during the election last year, did you see any posters on that painting? No, it's beautifying the city. And I, I will always propose for, for us to get the funding so that we, can, we could be able to do this more in other spaces to beautify the city. I found myself in Johannesburg in uh, 2014, uh, 17, and I got down and I asked myself, is this Joburg or <laughs> UK? I saw a lot of artworks, even metal works, to even design the streets. And I was like, ah, even South Africans are doing this. Why can't we also? You see? So um, I believe art can do a lot. Mm. In our schools, we should encourage the young ones, expose to them the diverse job opportunities in the art. It looks like artists in Ghana are limited. And with that, because of that, we are not able to express ourselves on other uh, art forms. But then if in our syllables, we have been introduced to all these things I made mention of, like the set design, the props design, the special effect, the makeup. You know, um, artists won't be handicapped. Because you paint, you wait for someone to buy. There are so many things you can do. You can jump on a film set, you can jump on a theater, uh, uh, um, uh, um, a theater, and you know, and can do so many things. So I believe art in itself, its life, as I said, it can also generate, uh, um, develop you and then the country as well. No, no. When we talk about reimagining Ghana's future artistically, what can we learn from our past? Because recently I was watching a video on YouTube about some people talking about um, building sustainable homes that, mm. that are good for the planet. And literally the homes they are building are the mud huts yes. that we have in Tamale That's and right. other parts of That's the country right. that we've taken for granted. Yeah. When, we, when you go to other parts of the world, you see art pieces from Africa yeah. that when we see, we will run away because we've been told that it belongs to the shrine, shrine yeah. or something. Yeah. But people outside this continent see all these things as work of art and they learn from it. How do we, in crafting and reimagining our future, learn about the things we've taken for granted, we've demonized in the past, to enhance what we are doing with our creative sector. Right. Thank you. I, I'm happy that you brought this. We need to demonize these things that they are a fetish. They are, I mean, sacred. You cannot touch. But like you rightly indicated, when you go outside there, they are craving. And these antiques, masks and all that, come at a high price. And People collect and keep. And those who have collected over the years, I mean, are very rich because of the artwork and all that. So what we want to share with the citizenry is that we need to open up that art is part of us. One area is our parents, that when the child gets into SHS and going to do visual arts, it's like, hey, <laughs> visual arts for what? Go do science, general arts, and so on and so forth. You want to be an artist? So we've been running program. Yesterday we were at Accra Girls Senior High School, and we had to empower them, encourage them that they should not allow themselves to be bullied yeah. in course by their science counterparts. Artists are deep people, yeah. very creative, and then they bring change. So our mud houses and all that architecture is changing. Yeah. Why do we want to follow the Europeans and the Western world? We have unique architecture. What is suitable for our environment and all that artistically? So it is important that we start a conversation, looking at what is good for us, picking things from the past to build up of course, with some contemporary influences here and there, but the core which identifies us, which makes us different as a people, we should not touch them so that the uniqueness will be there. When you travel outside, believe you me, we are hailed artists from Africa because they know that 
the original artworks are created by Africans. So it is very important that we cherish our biggest challenge as artists is the non-appreciation yeah. of art. People walk into the art center and then they see paintings. I was there and someone said that, uh, please, what do we do with this? <laughs> and he see, you go down. When you go in there, people who walk in there are the tourists. They get down and they buy work and go. Later on, then we start accusing them of looting our hardware away. They are with us. So we started a crusade that every home must own an art piece. It is life. We just had a discussion on using art to promote good health. Just imagine, you woke up maybe at dawn, rushing in here to be on set to run your program and order. By the time you get home, the mind as elastic, I mean, you have stretched yourself and all that. Your home, you need to get some good, nice batik curtain in your home with some good motifs in there that will relate and speak to you. Some good painting, some good sculpture piece, a ceramic piece somewhere that when you relax, you look at them. And especially when we have um, abstract works, it allows you to walk into the work and interact and discover what you want to see in it. By so doing, you go through that therapeutic process and it releases you, I mean, it distress you, and you come back. Uh, in science, they have the neocardiology, which is the communication between the mind and the heart. Now, art plays a vital role in that whole concept because the eyes will see the work bring and take pick it for the mind to digest, and then the mind bring us to the heart and therefore all calm the heart down and cool it. Socially, like you asked my brother, in our hospitals, in our offices, we need to see more artworks. Children hospitals and people even maternity wards and all that. There should be art pieces that a pregnant woman in pains, deep pains, should be able to look at it and see wonderful, nice landscape with some blue skies and all that. And Looking at it, gazing at it, you realize that unconsciously it distresses her. The pain vanishes naturally, and therefore she is ready to go through whatever process she needs to go through. So we are advocating that various social places yeah. needs to be. We need to incorporate art, and before the person gets to the consulting room, the lobby or the reception and all that beautiful with art would have done the first consultation with the patient before he gets to the physician. I think Nana has said it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone at home is looking forward to having a bright day today. Yeah. So where do we uh, engage you? Where should we come? Uh, of course, we're all going to end up at the AMA, but yes, walk yeah. us through the activities this, this morning. E either one of you can tell us <laughs> what uh, we're like doing today. Today? Yes. Uh, so we have an uh, outdoor painting, mm -hmm. uh, as Nana said. Um, and then right from there. That will be at the Atta Mills? At the Atta Mills, the yes, High, High Street. Street. Yes. Okay, so High Street. What yes. time should we all come there? 9, nine to, 12. to 12. Okay, yes, 9 please. to 12. Yes, and then um, after 2, two, two p.m. The AMA. Okay. Yeah, so, so we can exhibit some of the paintings. Nice. We did. And then we will also give chance to the populace to also yeah. come in. Hold the brush and That's do something. That's their favorite part. Exactly. Messing up the pieces. Ah. <laughs> Where do we follow you on social media? Any contacts you want to yeah. share with us? Okay. Um, Vasep is on Facebook. Vasep is still V A S E P. Mm -hmm. Okay. On Facebook, we have Gava. Uh, G A V A. G A V A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, on Facebook as well. Uh, I think you can also Google Gava and you can have a lot of. Yeah. Um, things to, to read on Gaza. Thank so, you yeah. very much. A Nana. quick one. So the focus is, this time I want to focus with the youth. So we getting the youth in there to come and then we engage them so that instead of going out there to, I mean, engage, engage in all the this and their energies will in be there. Okay. And then the kaya the truck pushers and all that we want to engage them on the street awesome. to feel mm -hmm. part of it. Okay. And at the end of the day, my message is that every home must yes. own an, an art, art piece. piece. Nana, Utua Hene Echampong is the president of the Ghana Association of Visual Artists, as GAVA. And of course, we have Prince Hilton here, CEO of VASEP. Thank you both so much for being with us.